Looking at tattoos. Careful. No, it's look at it. Boom. Would you go into the place where they have, you know, that they put the their hand through the through the the hole in the wall to get a tattoo? Would you do that? Would you put your hand and like not see, just let the tattoo artist do it? I know it wasn't glory hole. <laughs> That's what it was. It was a glory hole, but they called it something else. Wait, for wait, art. Will people pay for that? I don't know. No, you I'm basically... Just... It was basically like a type of lottery thing, and they had this one super well-known tattoo artist come, and he got ten people, and he just made up, like, would just tattoo whatever he wanted, and they wouldn't get to see what it was. And for some people, it was super cool, and then for other people, it was like, eh, I could, I could do without. I, I could would, do. I, I would never be. I would. I would never be able to do that, though. I just. I don't know. I. No. I mean, if if because he has some really nice stuff, but it's not. Um, like it's great, but it's not where I would look at every photo and everyone I would love immediately. But I think that it, it depends. If, it, on, like, if you're the kind of person who's already covered in tattoos and it's like just another tattoo, versus like, you know what I mean? Like I only. I mean, I have four, but there are four that are very like strategically placed and were very carefully picked out and they're like very you know what I mean like I wouldn't just get and I think like job wise too like I wouldn't just get what if like it's something that would like not be appropriate giant penis children you know <laughs> that's what I was saying I'm like oh giant no three. I'm good. We're, that's why I thought that they were all nice because none of them were, were dicks so giant 3D penis monster <laughs> okay let's say hi right, hi let's get shit together. how are you we're hi, only lovers know. left in the library we're a romance book club, and we read with vaginal fantasy. Although, do, are we read? We're not. They're on hiatus. They've abandoned yep. us. And so, <laughs> we went ahead and pick, read the book that they sort of soft, soft picked this month, and that was uh, Chloe Neal's *The Veil*. And oh, also, I'm Christina. I'm in Puerto Rico. <laughs> That's Andrea. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you guys. I'm on. I didn't know what you were pointing at. It's just like <laughs> anybody, anybody at this point, anybody. <laughs> um, I'm Andrea. I'm in Virginia, and and this is um Indy, also in Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> he he can He is not amused. No. Uh, and I'm Tashai, and I'm in Brooklyn, New York. Woo! <laughs> Represent. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, I'm going to see you soon. Yes! Christina's going to be here in a few days. And next month, next month, we're all going to have book club in Puerto Rico. Ooh, ooh. Exactly. Only, only lovers, sexy meetup slash sleepover, something. something That's like that. amazing. Stay tuned, internet, because only lovers stay at this sleepover. Uh, uh, oh, <laughs> I see what you did there. I see what you did there. Okay, so uh, so like I said, we read. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, is she gonna oh, go get the sweet Indy. potato? Probably, but Indy's there. Oh, my sweet potato needs to cook for like another forty minutes. I'm getting more bread for my butter. Oh, yeah. bread and butter. <laughs> In I don't. That's <laughs> rare. So Chai's not gonna get half of the jokes because yes. This Sorry. Was her, this was her cheat month. It was a crazy month, though. It was kind of crazy. Yeah, I work worked a lot. I worked a lot of hours, and I worked really late, and it's been a really shitty, really I shitty can't, time. I can't blame you for, for skipping it, because <laughs> it was a little forgettable. It was a little forgettable. Okay, so I'll just go. It's just going to be Andrea and me, and we're just going to be... This, the Hangout is just going to be us telling you about the book, what you haven't awesome. heard through the Facebook chat. Awesome. So, um, yeah, it was The Veil by Chloe Neal, and, I mean, it wasn't... <sighs> it was just very, it was just very forgettable. It's not that it was, like, terrible, because I really hated that other book more. Yeah, uh, which is, which is, which is saying something, because that was very, just, it was all over the place. But I loved it. I loved how crazy it was. It just was that there wasn't much going on in this one at all. Like, there wasn't anything going on. So everything that happened, I'd be like... Also, <laughs> I just have a big problem with, like, with, like, someone picking a book for a romance book club and it not even having, like, one freaking kiss. Like, oh, man. Why? You know, it doesn't have to have sex. There are there are books that... You know what? I would have even taken, like, like mental sexiness, like that euphoria, euphoria book that I gave you, Christina, that was yes. well, that wasn't real sexy. Yes. But... but you know what I mean? Like, this book didn't have a kiss, didn't have any, like, sort of, like, 
There was like one or two moments when it was like, oh, 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 maybe we'll connect. No, 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 we won't. But it was oh, like yeah, I have issues. tension. It was <laughs> sexy. It was just like. Oh guys- yeah, I mean <laughs> the expectations. The expect because obviously we read the we read hopefully romance in genre. Yeah. Right? So. I, if you pick a book for the romance book, I'm assuming there's going to be some romance, and that was one of the things that I disliked. That uh, it wasn't even like implied romance; they were just. Well, I'll get into it. We talk about this. But, I need some dawdling. You know, something, <laughs> some dawdling, some poking, something. Even the I mean, mirror book, even the mirror book, which had, was like breath action. Called <laughs> romance has some action. Okay. Had so creepy, creepy molesty. Yeah, Elrond. It wasn't Elrond, but mm. I, I can't get it out of my mind. Elrond, just like <laughs> boobs. <laughs> mm. I know I didn't read the book really, but my one comment is, it takes place in New Orleans, and the lead character is like this super pale lady with long red hair. Okay, let's get into so, it. So, uh, all right, so yeah. let's do this. I don't understand. I'm to find the summary of the book. Immediately. Immediately. So I can read it to you. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I had read this. I, I read the summary, and I thought it sounded okay. Remember when we when I first sent you guys the summary, mm-hmm. and you guys the reaction was, ooh, sexy magic. Wow. Yeah. Totally misleading. Totally misleading. Look at this. I gave it two stars. Like, I never do that. Even if I really dislike a book, I'll just do, like, three stars. I didn't like it. I wasn't into it, but I gave this two stars. I, I was really into the sexy angels, though. Oh, girl. Well, okay. So it says, the description on Goodreads says, Seven years ago, the veil that separates humanity from what lies beyond was torn apart, and New Orleans was engulfed in a supernatural war. Now, those with paranormal powers have been confined in a walled community that humans call the District. Those who live there call it Devil's Isle. And this is apparently the first of a series uh, that is like de- the Devil's Isle series. Oh, God. Uh, Claire Connolly is a good girl with a dangerous secret. She's a sensitive, a human endowed with magic that seeped through the veil. Claire knows that revealing her skills would mean being confined to Devil's Isle. Unfortunately, hiding her power has left her untrained and unfocused. Liam Quinn knows from experience that magic makes monsters of the weak. And he has no time for a sensitive with no control of her own strength. But when he sees Claire using her powers to save a human under attack in full view of the French Quarter, the Quarter, right? One that makes a lot of appearances here. (laughs) The Quarter, the Quarter. Uh, Liam decides to bring her to Devil's Isle and the teacher she needs, even though getting her out of his way isn't the same as keeping her out of his head. But when the veil threatens to shatter completely, Claire and Liam must work together to stop it, or else New Orleans will burn. And that is entirely misleading. That sounds like a lot of action. And, <laughs> and like, sexiness? Like, ooh, can't get her out of Can't get her out of my head? What? I didn't, did I skip that? I, I didn't skip any of this book. <laughs> I read very closely, so I would... Like, more like she couldn't get him out of her head. Like the whole book, she's like, mm, he's sexy. Mm, he's the hottest man I've ever seen. Mm, that's that's like some fine like candy right there. But then oh, thing but happened. you know what killed it for me every time? That I kept imagining him speaking with a Cajun accent. <laughs> and I'm like, ew, really? There's nothing wrong with having a Cajun accent, but I just I couldn't get Hello, the gambit out of my head. I remember I sent you guys that video trying to place the voice, mm-hmm. and none of them were doing it for me. The first one I liked it. Blaze on the tail. I just can't imagine someone talking like that the whole time. All right, so um, Andrea, are you eating bread? Can you give me the summary of the story? <laughs> Um, I like okay. how you summarize the paranormal romance. I like that. Yeah. Um, okay. So this is going to be like a very, very quick summary because it's like... Not a lot happens. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, backstory of this world, like you kind of got in the Goodreads thing, is that um, there are all these magical creatures that, you know, we thought we knew stuff about. Like think all like the, you know, angels and, and um, I don't even know, like, Whatever magical creature, I'm like going blank right now, but any magical creature you can think of, they lived on that side of the veil, and um, nobody knew they existed. So people thought, like we do now, that magic doesn't exist, and, you know, people who do it are like, kind of like voodoo or whatever. And then one day they, like, broke through to attack us, and people were like, oh, shit, magic exists, and, you know, what are we going to do? <laughs> so there was this giant war. 
um, and they closed the veil back up, put all the people who had magic or whatever in, you know, in the prison. The so devil's the, the devil's aisle thing. <laughs> so basically, we open up with the main character, and she has this, like, antique shop slash grocery like antique provision slash. shop. It was like, a, you can get anything there, to yeah. be honest. Mm -hmm. And um, she basically, like, it's like, and he's like, that's bullshit. Yeah, and it's like her family business. Her dad died, and it's just her. So she basically goes a lot into this kind of stuff because they say that a lot of people left New Orleans when everything went down, but she stayed because, you know, the store was her tie to her dad and all these things. Um, so basically she tries to keep it hidden that she's a sensitive. There's, like, cameras on every street to, like, track magic. So if you use magic, you know, then the cameras track you, and then you get put away. So There's a distinction between, like, a sensitive person and a paranormal person. Am I right? Like, Yeah, so so you have, like, the people who are born using magic, you know, like, who are on the veil or whatever, and everybody thinks these people are evil because they tried to attack us. Um, but as we find out later in the story, it, that wasn't necessarily the case. Um, <laughs> Although they, she couldn't decide if that was the case or not. I didn't understand well, that. Yeah, basically what they said is, like, well, it's like it's like now, right? It's like, ooh, terrorists do these things. The entire population from this country must be a terrorist. Um, but they're not. Um, so it's like the same thing. It's like there was like a revolt, and like some of them wanted to attack the humans, and some of them didn't. But at the end of the day, all it made was like all the humans think that all the paranormals or whatever were evil. Um, when really there were a lot who were anti the human attack and who were working in Devil's Isle to, like, ensure that something like that didn't happen again. Um, I don't know. There were a lot of, like, politics and stuff in this book and, like, trying to explain. Anyways, but so you have these people who have magic, and then you have the sensitives who kind of just absorb magic, and if they don't know how to use it, then the magic consumes them until eventually they, like, go crazy and turn into wraiths, which, like, are basically, like, these demented ghouls that, like, haunt people and, like, eat them. Le legit. They sound like dement... No, uh, they sound like <laughs> the dementors. Yeah, swear, yeah. That's what I kept picturing. And also, they, they nest. Like, they, they become wraiths, and suddenly they don't sleep in beds anymore. They nest. It sounded... Because I, I got as far as where they described the first wraith attack, and then I imagined them like the vampires in Underworld... But the super jacked up vampires that are like white and crazy looking, and they're yeah, just they're like monsters. With the rotten. Jaws. They're like zombie vampire, mindless. Yeah. Mindless, like just they just are addicted to. They have they had become addicted to their own magic, so the magic consumed them, and so they became wraiths, which we have to talk about because this magic system. Yeah, and so basically, um, she she saves this girl from the wraiths by using her own magic. Um, she can move things, by the way. Her sensitivity is like telekinesis. Yeah, and so this guy Liam, he comes over and he's like, "Okay, I'm a bounty hunter, but I'm not actually hunting you because you're sensitive. I want to help you." Um, and he's like, "Come with me, and we can get the videotapes from the cameras." Um, you know, tampered with so that nobody will know that you use magic um, to save her. So she goes into Devil's Isle with him, and that's when she starts learning that, like, not all paranormals are bad, and more importantly, that it's not a given that if you're a sensitive, you're just automatically going to turn into a wraith. It's like, if you can control your magic by doing, basically, what you do is, I don't know, it sounded kind of weird, but whatever. Their explanation for how to avoid the magic. <laughs> <laughs> there is a lot of kind of... It's like every day you would sit down and just like pull the magic out of you and then put it into an object and then bind it to that object and then and that that's what you would have to do. You basically have to like purge yourself of magic every day and then you wouldn't go crazy. So you, you make a holy mix. You, yes, <laughs> you be, yes, you make a horcrux because you have to like seal the magic into a into you have a to command it to like it's like Yeah, you can't be like, "Hey magic, could you please because magic doesn't listen to you, okay? Magic, <laughs> because magic because needs magic to be bossed around. Because magic, magic is man. definitely a man. <laughs> it doesn't magic. It doesn't know what it wants in this entire in this entire magic yeah, has okay. no idea what it wants. Of course, tell me more. So anyway, they meet this guy um, in Devil's Isle. <laughs> who's... Indy, yeah. Oh, Indy did not like the book. 
No. Uh, <laughs> they meet. They meet this like really cool um, magic creature who does like hacking and stuff, and he like. What's that guy's name? I put the horned hacker dude. Yeah, I don't He's know. Got the horn. <laughs> But and I keep imagining uh, the Iron Bull from from Dragon Age, which nobody plays, so I don't even know why I'm saying it. But that's who I pictured. They pictured this guy with like big like ox horns. Yeah. Just what about computer. what about um Hellboy, but less red? I don't know if it's like right here or if they're like. I imagine them like going like this. I don't know, but he fixes the tape for them, and basically it's like the first nice magical creature she's encountered. Like, that's when she was like, oh. He's cool, so I guess what Liam is saying must be true, and like not all of them are evil, and blah blah. blah. I don't understand how a person living in New Orleans would not understand like that. He's her first Latino friend. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> you're, living in, you're living in the South, girl. Like, how do you like? Oh, there's no black people. She's got one black friend. Let's That's see. What I'm She's got the one started, black friend. As soon as I started reading yeah. this book, I was like, how? Did only white people stay in New Orleans? Well, and so then they go see Liam's grandmother, and she's like, "All right, I'm gonna find someone to train you to do the Eleanor. whole poor crooks magic thing." Yeah. Um, she went blind. She went blind, but she can. She, she see blind. With her magic, but she can see magic colors, and everyone's on like a spectrum, which I thought was cool. I put it in my notes. I'm like, hey, that color spectrum stuff is yeah, cool. It reminded like, me of like an aura, and like certain colors match well with others. <laughs> so it's not that like if you're an orange, you need an orange teacher. It has to be like complementary colors. I don't know, but she picks out this teacher for her, and everyone's like, whoa, no. And she's like, yeah, let's do it. And it turns out that um this magic chick person is um, the ex of Liam's brother, and um, whatever. Apparently she's, like, very... It was a thing that wasn't a thing. It was a thing that wasn't a thing. Like, it, they made it into, like, whoa, and there was, like, no story there. So like, it wasn't she wasn't... Explained. She it wasn't, was like, like, someone who had ever banged Liam, and it was like, oh, you're his ex. It's, like, his brother's ex? Yeah, yeah his brother's like, ex. That's really... It was more, like, she is technically incapable of feelings because of what she is, but she kind of had feelings for him. And then he kind of had feelings for her, but was incapable of commitment. So then they, like, never did anything. Committed. What's her name? Tashai? <laughs> no, her name was Nix. And that's supposed to later That's supposed to later mean something. But her name was Nix. Like, N-I-X. Yeah. Like, so like I'm going to Nix that idea. Basically, the rest of the, the rest of the explanation is gonna go by real fast because what they do is they just like get out of Devil's Isle and for most of the book they're just like roaming around exploring shit and finding out facts to further prove that like all of Liam's theories are true and that um, you know someone's basically his theory is that the reason there's so many like wraith attacks happening is because someone's like tampering with it like someone's turning sensitives into wraiths and and then they find out that like basically this company or corporation or these evil people are like trying to open the veil because this is their justification is oh yeah i this this is when things get really cockamamie i'm just like what <laughs> what's going on oh wait, they jumped the shark there's kind of like right a police force that yeah. enforces all of these magical rules is containment the like containment. that's the coalition you know. Yeah. Exactly. That's the people who have the cameras and the magic monitors out, and they're the have the people on the street making sure that no one is using magic, that there aren't any sensitive or paranormals around, and if there are, they are the ones that take them into Devil's uh, into the district yeah. of Devil's Isle, which sounds like a really really hard place to get in, but they go in like two or three times. Like, yeah, it's really easy. And, it's um, real easy to get in there. So basically, basically what they're worried about is like that the veil is gonna get opened by the paranormals who are like on the other side, so they're like, oh, well, then we must open it before they open it so we can, like, attack them, like, surprise attack them, and I don't know. It's really dumb, but so they're trying to do that. Yeah, it was like a preemptive attack. They're like, oh, they're getting ready to attack us because the veil is fluctuating in a way that it has never fluctuated before. That means that they're going to attack, so we did really well in the last war. Not really. So let's attack them first. We only lost 48% of our troops. <laughs> and so, um, so basically they join forces with um, all these, like, good, um, par uh, all of these good, what was their name again? Par what? Paranormals? Yeah. They decide to join, like, the, the paranormals again, and um, 
the good ones to like not have that happen. So you have like all these magic people, and then Liam and what's her face, redhead, and Claire. Yeah, Claire, and they're working to not have the veil open, and then you have like the the corporation of like bad guys who wants the veil open, and so the whole book is like both sides like rushing to do their own thing, and so the the bad guys what they're doing is they're the whole reason the veil was like sealed was this is like a terrible explanation, but whatever they just <laughs> in the book in the book it's a terrible explanation. Yeah, it's, it's like, like they took all these sensitives and each sensitive used their magic to make a lock on a box. And so this box has all these locks with, that can only be opened by the sensitives who made, you know, each lock. So basically the bad guys are going through their, like, list of sensitives and just killing everyone off, like, turning them into raids, killing them all off, and then using the ones, you know, figuring out as they go who are the ones who made the locks and then taking those and having them unlock yeah, the locks. They overload, they overload in magic as they're unlocking the box somehow, right? That's that's what I understood happened, that they overload and then um, they become raped. So close to the veil that you, like, absorb the magic. And so, of course, you know, stuff happens, blah, 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 and then at the end it's like, oh, coincidence, there is only, like, one lock left and, like, all hell is about to break loose. Who is the only sensitive who can save the world? Claire! Claire With her walking stick! Yeah, and then it was like, and then it was like, ooh, ooh, like, like, totally unexpected, like, craziness of the book. The ex-girlfriend of the brother slash Claire's teacher was helping the bad guys get to the sensitives because she wanted to go back home. Yeah, she wanted to go back home. She wanted to reopen the veil, which I thought was valid. I thought it was valid. I said, okay, that makes sense. I don't know. I mean, at that point, wouldn't it just be easier to, like rip a little hole in the seam of the veil and just crawl through. But it was I mean, really funny, though. It was really funny because all through the book, Claire is like, she, whenever she tries to do this <laughs> bond or whatever, she's like, oh my god, <laughs> can't function, need a granola bar, all my energy is drained. Like, she's like super weak. But then she like goes up to this box and she's like, the veil magic goes on her and everything, but she's just like, I got this, bitches, and she like redoes all the locks. And then, and then <laughs> part, there's this, like, earthquakey thing, and the box starts to fall through, like, a crack in the earth, and she goes, like, no, and uses her magic. So she has this, like, she has this For real? pulls the box back. It was very dramatic, very dramatic, dramatic. and uh, and but just so really over the top, because the there box, had been no action, the and then no. suddenly... Because if the box fell, is about to fall, well, and it's if like, the box fell, then that means nobody could have opened it again. So I don't exactly, exactly. Exactly. I'm sorry. I'm using my arms way too much. But geez, it's it's like, well, let's just throw the box away because <laughs> yeah, exactly. that way no one can open it. And basically, the book right. ends there. So that was that was that. And uh, hopefully, in the next book, there's like some sexy things with Liam. I don't know. I'm not going to read the other books. That's the thing. Like, even even if Rosemary and Rue was pretty crazy, I still was interested enough to continue uh, reading book two and three, at least. So, I mean... Yeah, I kept reading like those, too. Yeah, well, I didn't like it. There was still something there. Like, I was still kind of curious me, about for it. Me, my two favorite things about this book were, A, the sexy-ass angels. Who are like yes. super like dark and like mm hmm and then B the fact that the sexy ass angels used carrier pigeons to transmit their messages. <laughs> so they yeah, were, I'm like, bro, you can fly though. Like, what are what are what are what are these angels though? Are they like um mon not monsters? Are they like creatures from beyond the veil? Yeah, they were, <laughs> they were paranormal. They were paranormal too. But they were like good ones who were, like, trying to keep the veil closed kind of thing. Okay, th so things that I didn't understand, when they were talking about the war, once the veil once the veil opened, they were talking about the war, and they were talking about that there was a war happening in the, like, beyond the veil, beyond the world in the veil, and it just basically when they opened the veil, what they wanted to do was access the people from our dimension mm -hmm. and use them as part of their war. Did I misunderstand that? Did I misunderstand? Is that what... No, I, I don't know. I, they it, wanted to like gather and then, gather soldiers, something like that. And then they, some of them actually, some sensitives and paranormals didn't even want to fight. They were com compelled. They were given like a compulsion in order to fight. Like they were fighting against their will, and so they were like, "Yeah, we were forced into this." So they were and, like brainwashed almost. 
Yeah, they were doing yeah. it against the will. Like that, like basically all of that stuff in the veil, like kept on happening after they closed. So, um, like all the paranormals kept talking that, like, yes, they were the paranormals were probably going to try to open the veil again, the ones on the other side. But again, not because necessarily that's what everyone wanted, but because like there was again like weird political stuff going on with like some like you know person. And so because reasons, because reasons. That's that's basically what it boiled down to. When Claire goes into the veil and doesn't like super explode with magic, because that's what I thought should have happened. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because she should have freaking exploded with all the magic that washed over her. What happened was like she was like standing here doing her like magic lock thing. And then the veil, because it was so, like, about to be open kind of thing, it was, like, moving around, so it went, like, and, like, waved over her, so she was, like, momentarily inside it, but then she didn't die, and she just saw everything that was there, and she saw uh, the army, it was, like, woman leader, and they were getting ready to attack, and they were almost about to kill her, but then the, the veil went, like, again, and then she was, like, fine. It was really weird. I thought so it was, it was really like, weird. it was, like, when you play, when you play, um... Uh, that thing with the big with the big sheet in gym the class. Parachute. The, the parachute. parachute. Yeah, it's like play parachute. <laughs> yeah, except that there's a bunch of people inside the parachute getting ready to kill, to kill you, you, which I thought was silly because I'm like, so they're just sitting there waiting. I mean, I guess Staring. you might have felt the, the veil about to rip open, but they were, um, I just imagine like Roman legions of just like thousands of people of, of soldiers. Just staring wall. at this. I'm like, y'all don't have anything else to do. You guys have magic. Like, come on, stop this. Like, what? Do you have nothing better to do? Than maybe it's like for this to happen. Maybe it's I like mean, having. Sure there's, maybe there's it's like having like expansion. Amazon Prime and Hulu and Netflix. After a while, you're just like, oh, there's too much stuff to watch. I'm not gonna watch anything. I guess it will be explained yeah. later. <laughs> but too I much didn't, magic. I magic. didn't get why they were fighting. I didn't understand what the fuss was about. You know. I didn't understand what the whole fuss was about. We t we didn't talk about two characters that I I enjoyed that were uh, Claire's best friends, and that was Gunner and uh, Taji. Um, Gunner works for containment, and then Taji is kind of like a linguist, right? You said the sexy linguist. She's Ooh, like she seems linguist. cool. Yeah. Right. Not enough of her in the book. Not Claire's like, oh, uh, she went to college, and I'm like, oh, tell me more. We <laughs> talked about we talked about like her her um. What she was studying in grad school was basically like how people's language had changed after the war, um, which I thought and especially was especially in the district. That's what she was interested in getting in there and and hearing how you know that language had changed. And of course, English major me was like, like was like, whoa, how about yeah. it? But it didn't. And I also didn't like. I don't know. She was like super anti magic, and she basically like disowned her family because they did magic, and I thought that wasn't cool. Yeah, I put um her 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 grandmother I don't know her grandmother or her aunt Phaedra and Zena they they were one of the one of the people one of the sensitives that locked the box yeah that locked the box and oh. the people that containment had tapped into and they had gone into hiding but even before that even before that Taji was like because mm, they were involved in they were said to know how to do voodoo. And they were like, uh, you know, involved in like just earthly magic, and, and she kind of really wanted to distance herself from that. When she found out that Claire was a sensitive, she like came over like, like, to like break up with her because like God forbid she's like friends with someone who's like magical. But then they like talked it out. But I, I just, I was just like, no, you are supposed to be the awesome linguist. What is your problem? <laughs> yeah, I didn't understand. I didn't understand where that came from. I think that that's what. Everything in the book that I didn't like or understand was because I didn't have enough information or they were doing things that I didn't know enough about them to understand. I didn't know enough about Taji at all to really justify why she would be so against it. She, at no point did she say, like, oh, I'm really embarrassed or like, you know, I just don't want to get in trouble. Theory, you know, like, like or I was attacked by someone who was when she explained when I was it, she's like, it just doesn't make any sense. But for a person who has lived through a freaking magic war, how is it not making sense? Like magic exists. Like that can't be a good reason. Let me just take this sense right here and uh, chuck it out the window. I mean, when Gunner found out that when Gunner found out that Claire was sensitive, he's like, why didn't you tell me? Like, why didn't you tell me? <laughs> like that was his. Well, he's like, like, why didn't you tell me? And, you know, 
she was she had a good reason. She's like, I don't know if I could trust you because you know containment's mad shade, mad shady. So I don't know if I could trust you. And he's like, fine. You know, he was okay with that. Um, there were other there were other characters too. Claire's dad gets a, a lot of mentions in this one, even though he's dead by the time that the story starts. Yeah. But it turns out, spoilers, if anyone decides to read this, is that um, <laughs> he apparently was sensitive too, and he hit it so well. He hit it so well. And Claire had absolutely no idea when when she found out through you know, something that happened. Some guy tra- came and trashed her store or something. Well, was that something that happened? <laughs> did did she get vandalized? Yeah, no, no, no. He he came with a with a warrant looking for magical objects. This guy uh, named Bruce, Bruce something or other. He works for containment. That he had a, like a, he held a grudge against Liam, and he went into her store and was looking for magical objects. But what he was doing was trashing the place. He ended up like you know breaking a bunch of walking sticks and stuff. Of course. Like, yeah, it was like, it was like, oh look, oh look, a an antique painting. Let me rip the canvas off in case like you hid. I don't know. It was really weird. What is this super priceless statue? Yeah, and she she was like, stop it. What are you? What the? What are you doing? And eventually, Gunner shows up and he says, um, this isn't how containment does things. But he has like a personal vendetta against. Uh, Liam Quinn, and he knows that they were hanging out because he feels that Liam Quinn is not responsible, he can't be trusted, they had a contract together, but he found out that uh, Quinn wasn't um, trapping all of the sensitive he was finding because he didn't consider them all bad, so he basically just didn't finish the contract, oh. and this Bruce guy it had it against him. One of those people was her dad. Ooh. He, did investigate, he did investigate her dad. When she found out, she was super betrayed. She was like, and that's why, and that's why they don't. Dad. And that's why they don't have sex because that's their fight. Okay, no, 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 no. this is this is the reasoning they give for why nothing happens. Okay, because if something went wrong and she didn't know how to like bind her magic properly or whatever, and she became a wraith and like started like killing people, or whatever, he'd be the one who'd have to lock her up, and that would be awkward. Oh, just shy. But like the moment what? that I wanted to, I wanted to really, I wanted to throw what? the iPad <laughs> across the. Okay, so he does this. He does this thing. Okay, here's what here's like, what I would here's what I would believe more. I can't have sex with you because I will turn into a dinosaur and I will kill you. <laughs> All right, so Dad, look. I wrote some stuff down because I wanted to at least have some some things that I, I enjoyed from the book and other things that I was just like no. And one of the things that I said, Claire. Although her, she was a really flat character, you know what I mean. She was there's nothing really interesting about her. She did have a lot of really good comebacks, and she was never, you know, like Oct- Oct- October Day was was just always hurt all the time, even though she was supposed to be a knight oh and you know a oh, here's- warrior. Like here's I like number that. 48. Ugh. I like that Claire. She was strong in her own way. She had an attitude. Even when this even when she was scared, she always really tried not to show that she was scared. And she always had a really good comeback. She was a jokester and like when she and, and Liam were talking, I did like that. I like that she was really sassy with him, but it, it was only very just very few things, you know. Um it wasn't that interesting of a of a mystery, really. I mean, I like oh, the rapes or acting like people. No shit, they used to be people. Wow. Oh, that's like in I Am Legend with the with the weird monster things, and then it's oh, like yeah. they act like a society, and then oh, they talk to each other like they have plans and communicate, and the men are chasing after them. Oh. Could it be that this is his wife? <laughs> <laughs> and then like, Will bro. Smith is like. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, my mind has been blown. Okay, other things that I like. I like the magic on the magic spectrum. I already said that. I like the store. The store sound really charming. I'm sure I'd go there if I had. If there was a store like that. The store you sounds go like buy war store. rations and walking sticks get, and old any clocks. Butter. Didn't get any butter there though. Yeah, that's for special the special code stores. And uh, <laughs> is, what, is, this, what is this butter thing? I know she was like. Like, I can't get any dairy, and I want cheese. They were just, like, rationing stuff, you know, so stuff like like tea or coffee or chocolate or, you know, dairy or whatever was, like, super rare. But it was just really funny because then she'd get these, like, rare shipments, and she'd be like, 
Like, like I would be like, what? I just got chocolate. I'm going to eat half of it myself. But she was like, no, 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 because it's like, then I'll get used to these, like, rich, like, tastes and, like, luxuries. I don't want that. You get, like, Treat yourself. You got exactly. the butter. I would have been like, ah, I'm just eating. That's so stupid. That's like, I used to eat, I used to go out to dinner with my family, and I would save my favorite part for last, but then I would realize that I would get full eating everything else, and then I wouldn't get to eat the thing that I wanted to eat the most. So now I flipped it around and I eat the part that I want to eat the most first and then I eat everything else. Okay, good plan, good plan. Oh, well, okay, wait. I was talking, we were talking about this not romance thing. We were talking yeah, about yeah. Liam. something and you were like, And eh. so he, yeah, okay, so they, they, had, they, they had chemistry and it was obvious right from the get-go. I was really shocked at how she trusted him really fast. And he opened up to her and took her to Devil's Isle. Super, like, th there was no question that these two were going to be a thing. Right from the beginning, when they first met, like, they had that weird, like, eye contact yeah. thing in the, at war during night. During the parade. It's like, during the parade, <laughs> they saw each other. And, you know, you knew it was going to be a thing. And then when it wasn't a thing, it was like, I felt cheated. I felt completely and cheated. Like, oh, no. And then at the end of the book, Liam's brother, who I actually kind of liked, like, he was kind of cool. Um, he's like, well, you know, I'd do you, kind of. <laughs> he's, like, oh, he's so dead. But then, but then he's like, but really, though, you should just go after him, because my brother's dumb. And she's like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to go after him. <laughs> yeah, they, they have, they have, they have chemistry, and and right from the, right really early actually, like more a little bit earlier than halfway through the book, they have this moment where like they're holding hands or whatever, and like they're about to kiss, like she's like, ah, uh, she's doing the thing with like her mouth open, <laughs> and then he puts his hands <laughs> on her face, and she's like so. <laughs> <laughs> Every awkward tween movie. <laughs> the Sorry. gaping maw. Wow, that's too real. Wow, that was too real. <laughs> so she's she is doing the gaping maw. He is holding the maw, and and then she's like she just couldn't feel it. And then he's like, ah, oh, I just can't afford you, Claire. Like this weird yeah, that's his legit, Like that is his phrase. It's like I can't. I can't afford. afford you. I can't. Ju I just can't afford you. Oh, wait, I just can't afford you, Claire. And uh, wait, I'm not a prostitute. <laughs> <laughs> Also, wait, do you have cheese? Because then you totally can. Yeah! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's like... For, <laughs> we'll trade sex for two. Yeah, that would be, like, the biz, though. Like, I, <laughs> I would totally... Mira, honestly, rough times come, uh, come around, and I need to get a fix. <sighs> Thank you. I really like cheese, you guys. I really like but cheese, and cheese? I really like, like you pickles. You can totally afford me if you've got cheese, for real. Yeah. I mean, like, <laughs> what kind of cocktail olives do you have? Let me see what appetizer options you have available. <clears throat> okay. Okay, but, okay. Going back to this rationing and war stuff, I don't know about, about you, but I didn't feel like... I didn't feel like every... I didn't feel like there had just been a war... It, you know, the whole rationing, everything felt, like, super chill. Like, I don't know. And I don't know about you guys, but I felt really strange because I can't, like, nowadays, I can't think of New Orleans without thinking about, you know, that, you know, Katrina oh, sure. blew through there. And yeah. it was completely devastating. And it just didn't feel, like, it didn't... I was upset at that for some reason. I felt like, why are you ignoring this thing that happened? I get it that she didn't have to include it in her book. Like maybe in this particular universe, it didn't. It didn't happen. But I feel like it was also kind of like a missed opportunity uh, if there was going to be like a calamity because there is kind of like a disaster. The the use of magic just it fucked up the land. They can't plant there. Uh, they it didn't make a lot of sense because there was a lot of trees. I didn't understand how that worked. Like they couldn't plant, but there were yeah, trees. Yeah. At some point, they said something like, it, "We found out that we could harvest if we used clean soil." And I was like, "Okay, so you're you're using dead soil, and then you're putting clean soil, and then planting the tree, but roots spread, 
And these roots are spreading into the dead soil. So how is this? <laughs> we all planted the bean in the cup. We all saw the roots grow. In the napkin, in the napkin. You can make a bean grow on a do not, Roots do not grow vertically. Roots also, grow. Also, there's a lot of stuff that you don't need soil um, to grow. Like, I took an aquaponics course. And there's a lot of stuff that you can grow in, like, buckets. You can of grow hanging tomatoes. They've got tomatoes. magic monitors. They've got magic monitors. Yeah. How do those things work? And yeah. why, can, why do we have a magic monitor but not, like, a hydroponic garden where we, we don't make tomatoes yeah. whenever we want? Yeah. You have magic monitors, but you can't figure out how to make fucking cheese? Really? <laughs> really? No, no, this is like, yeah, this is my oh, hang Because no, then, then their explanation was, it's not that, like, they couldn't make cheese or whatever. It's that they couldn't make it right there. It had to be imported. But then the people who had all these things, who were out of the war zone, didn't want to like send their stuff through the war zone or like like it was a it was a, a trade problem more so than like a creating it problem and I just thought that was dumb because I was like what do you like do you not have planes that can fly the I don't understand. Do we want to say that this is like commentary on the government's inability to assist after disasters? <laughs> I don't know if that that's a thing. That's okay. The con containment was inept the entire book. They didn't do one freaking thing right. They were never there during the wreath attack. And the boxes never worked whenever anyone used magic around them. And all they did was be in the way of whenever, you know, you actually needed them. Once they find out, once this guy finds out that it's actually this company that they leased to that's after um, the opening of the veil, it takes them for, like, it's basically like, oh, let's let's shuffle some paper around and see what happens, and then yeah. once it's done, they're like, oh, well, yeah, okay, then I guess we're not going to contract them anymore. Like, really? So are we but I don't saying, know if it was that smart. I don't so know are, if we it, saying, are we saying that George Bush runs this company? <laughs> cookie, cookie. Is that, what, is that what's implied? I don't know. It didn't, it didn't, it certainly didn't feel that way. It didn't feel like... It, I know that you know. I just felt like she had to kill a Valkyrie, by the way, and <laughs> during the war, you know, one of them like ran into her house. I at first I thought like, whoa, she was in the she was in the war. She battled. Nah, she was just in her in her store. One of them came in and she had to like stab it. And so it's mentioned like two or three times, and you'd think that have, that would have a bigger mark on someone, but I guess it didn't. It did. That's why the disasters didn't feel that important to me. It didn't feel that big of a deal. Whereas, you know, New Orleans is a place that did go through something and I felt like it deserved better. And it didn't feel, it felt like this could have been happening anywhere. The only reason that I knew it was New Orleans because the quarter, the quarter, they said the quarter like 40 million times and then like, you know, voodoo. Ooh. Would, it have made, would it have made more sense if if she had tried to intertwine the two things where like, some sort of natural disaster did happen, but it was specifically connected to this ripping of the veil. I just, and that was the expression of this attack. And then somehow the post-destruction would have been the scene where this would have happened. And there, yeah, the people weren't, weren't, up, weren't upset enough. In the like chunk that I read, everyone was just sort of like... Well, whatever. We went through a war and everything yeah, sucks. But let's go dancing. Yeah, it just, I just we thought it looked really good. good. We're all super sexy and not emaciated. It's great. I just thought it wasn't, it wasn't like very realistic. I guess, like, or I mean, I don't know. Like they kept talking about how like the power goes out all the time or whatever because because of the remnants of the magic or whatever. But I just feel like that's a problem that would have been fixed really quickly because clearly they managed to fix it for the cameras that are always working on the streets or whatever. <laughs> so why are people still losing power in their houses? You know, like, it, there were just, like, a lot of discrepancies, I think, in, like, how stuff worked or... World or, building. There's yeah. There's not good, solid world building. The world yeah. was strange, and then... I don't know. I just... All in all, like, I don't think it was a terrible book. It was just very, very forgettable. 
Yeah, not the setting wasn't compelling. Like you read, you read one of Anne Rice's books, and you're you're mm. there. You're in, this was not Anne Rice's New Orleans. This was not this place at all. It, there was for a place that had just been like showered in magic that people that weren't even born magical were were um you know suddenly had magic but they couldn't use it. It didn't feel magical. At, it didn't feel magical at all, it, at all, and it didn't feel like disastrous at all, even though it had the war had happened, you know, Savage a few years previously, side. but they were still, you know, these ecological and, you know, just like emotional repercussions that it's like, well, let's just go to war night and have some drink. Woo! And, let's drink! Woo! You know, and the biggest worry is people using magic. God. Idiots. Alright, so... All that shit aside, if you guys were somehow exposed to magic that leaked through a veil, what do you think your powers would be? Pyrotechnic! Jubilee? Jubilee? Hippie Jubilee? Yes. I'd be too. Wait, is she the one with. She doesn't hook up with Gambit, does she? Is she yeah, the one she who hooks up with Gambit? Yes, no! no! <laughs> <laughs> the... Andy Sorry. wants to go out. Do you see him standing at the door? Oh, Andy! Waiting for me to like. Andy. Does he have to poop again? Is that what he wants? I guess. I. Andy. Oh, look at him! Look at him! Yeah, he's mad. He went on the bed. Yeah. Half of the recordings of any of these videos is just me screaming Indy's name. People fast forward and it's just me. <laughs> Doing that face. over Toshe, you'll be able to actually say his name while holding him. <laughs> yes. All right. So nothing. I mean, I was. I, I didn't hate the. I didn't hate it. I thought it was okay. It was okay. But it was, did not blow my mind. I've, I've I've read better, and I probably won't continue the series. Sorry. So I feel bad when I don't like a book, but I didn't like it. Like, like you it. can't like everybody. You can unmatch this book. It's, it's okay. Work. It's it's work, and I feel guilty when I just feel like she she maybe she felt like she put a ton of work into this world, and I found like so many flaws in it. I just wish that I didn't. I wish I'd be like, ah, oh, this is a great book. Everyone should read. It. And not all books are that book, I guess. So nah. just... you live and you learn, and then yeah. you... well, at least kissing, man. Kiss. Yeah. Have them kiss. Yeah, and the thing is that I'm like maybe she didn't mean it to be a romance, but at, when you get to the end of the book, it it's it indicates clearly that you know there was supposed to be a thing because let me see what it says here. It says like, did you like Liam and Quim? Then you really like it. And I'm not even interested in reading her vampire series. You know <laughs> what I mean? Yeah. I'm like, eh, no thanks. Maybe I should finish writing my vampire story and then um, I can publish it on Amazon and we'll see if. If it becomes a thing. I, I believe that it would become a thing because I am never going to forget that that story about the dinosaur porn <laughs> is on and it makes money and it even has an audio recording. Also. Like, yeah. It's really it's a really bad audio recording, but it's it's got one. We need to like I need to like make a list of like all these books that we've read for book club by now so like I don't forget them. That's funny. I won't let you forget it. I won't let you forget it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if okay. I if I'm not mistaken, I think the name of my vampire story was was Nibble. <laughs> <laughs> Working title. Working title. Yeah. I mean, it's not. It wasn't supposed to be dirty or anything. It's actually. I need to. I need to pick well, it up. You know I thought it was a really good book. We'll know. talk. We'll talk offline. Okay. But internet. I might it's publish coming. a vampire. Conspiracy, government plot on book. You publish on Wattpad? Why not? Soon. It will be awesome. Okay, love Liam and Claire. <laughs> then meet Ethan and Merritt. Read on for like what? No, I'm not. Ew. Like I, I did not enjoy Liam and this. He had a cool name, but boy, was he disappointing as a dude. And he wears like V-necks. Mm. Okay, but let's, V-neck. not, let's not necessarily hate on the V-necks. I mean. I feel like some. That's true. I know. I know a lot of people. I know a lot of people who wear V-necks. No, I know, but he's like real buff. Does anyone watch Heart of Dixie here? No. No. God damn. It's <laughs> just you. Sorry. <laughs> just me again. <laughs> you're like the one person. You're like the one person who keeps all these very specific shows alive. Like, yeah. um, oh, what's it called? 
um, um, like psych. You keep psych in business, I don't really and uh, psych. <laughs> I did. Like, I out. <laughs> that guy's hot. Okay, that guy who works. Really hot. <laughs> okay, so um, like I said at the beginning of the hangout, vaginal fantasy is on hiatus. Uh, so they're not going to be recording their episode, uh, and they didn't actually pick a book for December. So I went ahead and I looked through their like Catalog? suggested reads or whatever uh, the last time we voted, and I saw, saw a book that I ended up I had read before, but I can't remember exactly all of the details. But uh, so I picked it because I don't know I have it in print, so why not? And so I picked the Golem and the Genie by I don't know if it's Helen Wecker or Helene. Wecker, but I mean, just look at that. Come on. That looks really oh, good. are you? Uh, I should just get it myself. It already looks like a step above what we've been reading lately. My mom read it and she loved it. She, uh, I, t I suggested you suggested to her and it was good. I yeah, don't know if there's like a, it. Uh, it was. I mean, I know that the it takes place in New York. It takes place in New York and Yay! it's like a, the eighteen, the late eighteen hundreds. Let me read the. Let me read you the. Yeah, the jacket. So pretty. Okay, it smells good too. <laughs> it smells like talent. Um, actually, the the reason why I don't remember it all is because I had it as an audiobook, and I have the book oh, yeah, because you know, like when you when you watch the movie and you buy the DVD, but you're not gonna watch the DVD ever. You just buy it to like. Have it, <laughs> so that's why I have it here. So it says, uh, "Chava is a golem, a creature made of clay, brought to life by a strange man who dabbles in dark cabalistic magic." Amat is a genie, a, a being of fire, born in, a, in the ancient Syrian desert. Trapped in an old copper flask by a Bedouin wizard centuries ago, he is released accidentally by a tinsmith in a lower Manhattan shop. Struggling to make their way in 1899 New York, the golem and the genie try to fit in with their immigrant neighbors while masking their true selves. Meeting by chance, they become unlikely friends, whose tenuous attachment challenges their opposing natures. Until the night, the terrifying incident drives them back into their separate worlds. But a powerful menace will soon bring the golem and the genie together again, threatening their existence and forcing them to make a fateful choice. Marvelous and compulsively readable, the golem and the genie weave strands of folk mythology, historical fiction, and magical fable into a wondrously inventive and unforgettable tale. Although I kind of did forget it. Bow, 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 it sounds so good. It sounds so good. I can't wait to read it with you guys. I'm really pumped too. Sorry, I had to. I had to like go take my sweet potato out of the oven. Oh. Zit on my back. Why? I'm excited. Why? Why are you doing this? Sorry. <laughs> Arguing on my back. That's a real world right here. That's a real world right here. <laughs> real women. All right. All right, so no, that was it. Oh. Okay, Internet, I'm sorry that I didn't read this book. I promise I'll read the next one, but I'm so tired. I'm so no, tired. well, you better step it up because this book is long. And I know, I know. Like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually just um, I'm gonna get it on my Kindle, and then I'll start reading it ASAP. Rocky. I don't have the date for the next hangout, but anyway, this was fun. I'm glad that we all agreed. Yay! <laughs> we, well, me and Andrea agreed. We're on the same page about the same. I thing. mean, as as far as I got in the book, I was already annoyed. I'm like, why is she redhead? Why? Where are all the people that would be in New Orleans? What somebody kind of disaster forum, is this? Why is this magic stupid? Saying, somebody in the forum was saying that like they chose it because the lady on the cover looked like Felicia Day, and I'm like, no. no. She looks nothing like her, and she was Felicia Day's way cooler, and whatever. <laughs> I'm very irritated with that. Whatever. I think they just picked it because, because I don't even know why. Anyway, because right, the so concept of it sounds interesting. It's just it's not terrible. good in practice. No, I just I don't know. Okay. Well, anyway. All right. Bye, guys. We're going off the air now. I hope you enjoyed watching. And yeah, subscribe if you want to see us ramble on next month. Maybe in person. Maybe oh, not dude, sober. Awesome. Maybe really not sober. Maybe my hair will be a different color. Maybe we'll all be wearing pajamas. Maybe Christina will have sangria lip stain because she will love the sangria so much. Maybe we'll all eat pizza. Maybe. And maybe, maybe there'll be sexy times or some romance. Come on. Some romance right. to talk about. All right, bye guys. See ya. Bye. <laughs> bye.
Bye.